Uh, good morning, Alison. Well, I'm not in the government, so that isn't a decision that uh, is mine to make. However, what I did do last year is set up the All-Party Parliamentary Future of Aviation Group to advocate uh, for travel and aviation sector recovery. And everything that Brett has said is absolutely right. The best way to recover the industry and to save as many jobs as possible is to allow meaningful operations over these uh, coming summer weeks and months. It's estimated that in normal times, aviation over the summer season brings in about £19 billion to the UK economy. And if it isn't able to operate, not only will it not be contributing to our economy, but it will actually be costing our economy because the airlines, airports, the increased unemployment benefits uh, costs over the coming autumn and winter months, if there isn't meaningful operations over the summer, will cost the government a lot more. So what uh, I am saying to the government uh, tomorrow when I'm leading a debate on this in Parliament, what I will be saying to the Prime Minister later today when I meet with him, is that allow meaningful travel that is safe, and it is safe if people uh, are double vaccinated, over these uh, summer periods uh, and that will save as many jobs as possible because as Brett was saying the furlough scheme comes to an end uh, in September uh, and there are in normal times over one and a half million people employed in the sector across the UK. Um, outbound travel uh, brings into the UK economy some £38 billion pounds inbound travel to the UK, uh, some uh, it's about £27 billion, pounds, uh, and therefore really allowing safe operations uh, is the way to uh, recover the sector. It was one of the first to be almost immediately impacted. It will be one of the slowest uh, to recover. Uh, we've had an amazing, successful vaccination programme. Let's not squander that benefit and uh, let's get people travelling again. And it's not just about summer holidays. It's not just about two weeks on the beach. This is about us being global Britain, an island trading nation, and that point about transatlantic travel uh, is a very good one. Every day that we're not having meaningful travel uh, between the UK and the United States, it's costing our economy thirty-two million pounds a, a day. Yeah. So we do need to get we do need to get the things going again for the sake of people's jobs. Um, do you think the Prime Minister will listen to you? Well, yes, I, he's he's always uh, he's always willing to listen, and I. You know, these are invidious and very difficult choices for the government. They are seeking to protect the country from a virus that has had a crisis effect around the world now for well over a year. And I understand that. But with our successful vaccination programme, we can start to open up. And we are beginning to be at a competitive disadvantage. There are countries like Germany, for example, that is allowing vaccinated travel, including to the United States. And that is a disadvantage to our economy. Mm. Have you got a holiday booked, Henry? And do you think it will happen? Well, I hope it will happen. And I would like to be able to uh, get away. But the point that Brett was making about uncertainty for the business is a very good one. If business doesn't know what is happening, it can't plan. Uh, and therefore, that uncertainty is very damaging for confidence in people being able to travel. And the uh, the listener that you spoke of earlier on, who's hoping to go to Greece, um, if they have to sort of cancel again, that is very damaging for confidence uh, in the in the travel sector. Henry Smith, MP for Crawley, thanks for joining us. It's eight nineteen.